you don't want to spend twenty, thirty thousand. Let the next person put the new carpet in, unless it's real bad, because you're not going to pick out their favorite carpet anyhow. If it's just a normal neutral paint, leave it be. Let somebody else do that. Welcome everyone to the Closing Table Podcast, brought to you by Windowsill. I'm your host, Kat Spooler, and today we are here with Carrie Dickinson. Associate Broker with Remax, Carrie, thank you so much for being here today. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. So Carrie, you, your area is like the Greater Lansing area, yeah? Yeah, yep. um, really all of Greater Lansing. I go all the way. We can sell all over Michigan, but I'm really concentrated in Clinton County, Ingham County, Shiawassee, all that area. So, Excellent. Yeah. And you've been doing this a long time, huh? A long time, over 23 years. Love every day of it. So yeah. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. It's, it's wonderful to you have a career that you love absolutely can't wait to get out of bed in the morning to be honest oh, with you I love it what I a joy. yeah I, I get up at 4 30 um, I know that's crazy oh, but wow. I can't like if I stay in bed by at five o'clock I'm like I gotta go I gotta get going so I love what I do and do you like start working right away yeah you- yep. wow. coffee one cup of coffee and then I'm at my computer before anybody else gets up so yeah Wow, yeah. I bet your clients love that. I, I Well, they know I'm an early bird because they might not get their email till 7 or 8, but I am. they have their email from me at 4.30, 5 o'clock. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Mm-hmm. And it seems like maybe going into real estate was kind of, was it always in the cards for you? You, you come from a family of builders, correct? Yes, I do. I have my, both my grandpas were builders. My husband has been a builder, my high school sweetheart. We've been married 34 years. Oh. And so we, um, and we do, did home inspections till a few years ago. So we have, um, I know a lot about building and I was a hairdresser for 30 years. So that, um, but for 20 of those years, I was doing real estate and owned a salon wow. and so now I um, fully do full-time real estate and we did home inspections um, which really helped me learn a lot about what to look for in a house yeah for my buyers and my sellers well so. it makes sense that you owned a hair salon because you have gorgeous oh hair. thank you very yeah. much oh, <laughs> I saw you know all your social media posts and I had, I had come across that you had owned a salon I was like it makes 100% sense. <laughs> we're really particular darn it <laughs> <laughs> yep um, and so how did you kind of juggle having those parallels careers like that's a lot I have to say I think it was a benefit to be a hairdresser because I if somebody's going to do your hair and come to you to they trust you and Mm -hmm. so they already know you when you sat down with your hairdresser you they're your friend they're not you know and so they already know your family I know they're everything about them and yeah okay Carrie now you're doing real estate who else better to come into your home, look through your house, tell you, you know, there's, they, they could trust me already. Right. So, and they're yeah. probably, you as the hairdresser are probably one of the first people that they're telling like, oh, I think I need That's to right. move or. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All the personal stuff. They know what's going on. A lot of life events, some deaths, some divorces. So it just made sense. And then when we started doing spec homes and flipping homes with my husband, I'm like, why would I not just get my license so I can sell my own homes? Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. So, so, so is that, did you get started, you know, kind of more in the construction, more in the, the investor side before you got your license yes. then? Yeah, we had done spec homes for a while and um, I had a wonderful uncle that was our realtor and he, when we were selling them, me and Danny selling them and then he said, Carrie, you should really get your license and he sort of took me under his wing and it was, it was great. He's retired now. He's one of my dearest friends. Um, even though he's our uncle, he's a dear friend. He checks in on us and yeah, he was my mentor. So oh, yeah. I love that. I love hearing how, you know, you, people have that person in their life yes. that kind of like pushes them into greatness. Yes, absolutely. He was a godsend to me. So yeah. Oh, that's so yeah. cool. Yeah. So I and and really has pushed you into greatness because you have quite a few awards, one of them being the one of the top 100 agents in Michigan, yeah. among many other things. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank that's you. so cool. Thank you. What do you like? How did you achieve that? I really think it is all about listening to your client and caring and just like being available. I know some some people think it's crazy, but I love to work a lot, uh, 24-7. I tell my buyers and my sellers, I'm available even on Sunday. I'm a, I am I want you to call me. If you have a problem, please text me. I always say, let me do the worrying for you. I will take care of this for you. And, and I think that helps. They want to be heard. They want to know that you have their best interest at heart, and I truly do. So, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. it shows. It yeah. goes a long way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, let's talk a little bit about these like home inspections and this aspect of it, because that seems like 
something that would be incredibly valuable to have that knowledge as a, a real estate agent so that you can kind of share that knowledge with your clients. Like, yeah. let's talk a little bit yeah. about that. Yeah. Yeah. So home inspections. No way do I step on a home inspector's toes. I just, it, what it is a benefit for for my buyers is, okay, when we're looking at houses, maybe I see they're looking at all the wonderful stuff in the house because they're excited to buy the house um, and I am going through sort of like their mom saying yeah but did you see that and did you see mm -hmm. that and I still if you want the house I'll help you get the house but I want you to eyes wide open um, and as with sellers sometimes when I do the walk through before I list their house I can remember once um, I was walking through with a lady she'd lived there 30 years and I said well what happened to the ceiling she looked up she said Carrie I never seen that and she had a leak oh. in her up upstairs bathroom that was just dripping a little bit she never noticed so it was an easy fix but boy when a buyer comes through to see that um that would be a there'd be like a leak and they'd worry about it mold and everything it's so so many times people overblow things where it can just be fixed very easily with a with a, just a little help so. that's awesome it's about being like proactive that's rather right. than reactive that's right yeah right mm -hmm. and oh gosh yeah that is so crazy that <laughs> that person didn't even know yeah. in their own home. She couldn't believe it. And she was my age. She's She was no dummy. She knew her stuff, and she just hadn't looked up in a long time. So, <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. It happens to the best of yep. us. Um, one of the other things in terms of inspections that you've talked a lot about on social media is radon testing. Mm -hmm. Can we describe that for people? Maybe someone doesn't even know what radon is. Yeah, radon is a second leading form of lung cancer in the United States. It is, um, you can't see it, you can't smell it. So it really, it benefits any buyer and even a seller, even somebody just living in a house for a long time, get a radon test kit. Um, I used to do that with part of our inspections. Now that we are no longer, we're too busy to do inspections anymore. So, um, but you can get a free one at the health department um, and you hang it up in your basement or your lowest livable area. If you don't have a basement, send it in, get the results, anything 4.0 or higher should have a mitigation system put in. And one thing I want people to know, it's not a deal breaker. Uh, radon, to get a mitigation system is normally right around $1,000. So if you're buying a house and maybe the buyer and the seller can split that, it's not a deal breaker. It's an mm. easy fix. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. Cause, uh, I would. I didn't know. Yeah. I yep. think a lot of us, you know, we have the carbon monoxide. Yes. Like that's pretty widely known. Yes. But yeah. yeah. Radon is a big deal. So yep. Yeah. Ah. Oh, well, yep. thank you for yep. that. Um. So, kind of, along the same lines of of getting a home ready for sale. What are some other things that you do with your clients to kind of help them? Yep. First thing. Um, and I get these calls every day. Carrie, I just want you to come over. We don't know if we're gonna sell right away, but I need to know what my house is worth. Fine, go over, that's always free from me. I always do a free market analysis and um, go through, talk to them what they could do to fix up their home. But a lot of times you don't wanna spend 20, 30,000. You know, let the next person put the new carpet in unless it's real bad because you're not gonna pick out their favorite carpet anyhow. If it's just a normal neutral paint, leave it be. Let somebody else do that. The things that you need to worry about, hey, is that roof getting old? Somebody's, that's gonna ding you on price. You know, somebody wants a nice roof. Somebody does not wanna repair a roof in the first five years of having a house. Hey, have you had your drain field um, pumped, your tank pumped in a mm. while if you live in the country? Very important to do those kind of things. So, and some people in the country forget even about the drain field and have the tank pumped every couple of years so you don't have the problems later on. There's a lot of proactive things to do to have a house. You have to look like you're maintaining that house before a buyer wants to buy it. You, it's just the way it is. So, yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. That's awesome. And yeah, probably drain field is out of a lot of people's Absolutely. minds. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and a lot of people that come from the city and buy in the country don't really understand what a drain right. field is. Yeah. We not only did home inspections, we did well and septic inspections too. And you know, it was like we're digging holes up test holes in the drain field for clean, dry stone. There are, um, and it wasn't just my husband doing it. Like we were both with shovels doing it. And oh boy. It, yeah, it was, it was tough, but, um, I learned a ton. I learned a ton. I know how a drain field works. Uh, as far as wells, you need to know if you're there's a holding tank in the basement, the blue big tank in the basement. You know, you wanna make sure that's not saturated. Um, there's so much 
that people don't know that I love to share with them. You know, um, when I'm showing houses, I a lot of times they go in the basement and they're like, what's this? Well, it's the water heater. But they never had to deal with it before. They mm. rented, they didn't worry about it. So yeah, there's a lot to know before you buy a house. Yeah, Certainly, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and having that kind of knowledge as a builder really helps you too, yeah. you know, the inspector and the builder. Yep. Um, can we talk a little bit about like your in investment properties and, yeah. and things like that? So we own storage units. Um, we've owned them for probably 25 years over north of St. John's. We have rentals, um, the hair salon. Uh, all of it works together. If one mm -hmm. thing isn't going good, like when building was rough a couple years, a few years ago, you know, we had stuff to fall back on. We are very, uh, we have a lot going on all the time and, and we thrive on it. At least I thrive on it. I'm not sure my husband does anymore. <laughs> He's like, when are we retire? And I'm like, you can retire. I'm never retiring. I love my job. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. so fun. Yeah, you have so. such a great energy. <laughs> and like the storage thing makes so much sense because you have people moving. Yep. Oh, you need a reliable storage right. unit. Like I'm right here. <laughs> it's all, it all comes back yep. to you. And I think that's really smart for your business. Yep. When they weren't full, when the storage units weren't full years ago anybody that um, was buying a house or selling a house I gave them a month storage free just wow. it just works together now they're so full it, it because everybody needs them, them um, that I don't have that opportunity but absolutely I try to help people out so you have a really generous spirit <laughs> where do Thank you think you. that comes from I don't I don't know I I really enjoy helping people I yeah. think it being a mom and grandma you're just always taking care of somebody you know so and I think that I think that's what I like to do the best that's so. so sweet. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I, people love working with you. I can just tell. Um, you're very active on your social media, too. You, your personality is, is out there. Do you think that helps with yeah. your businesses? If, if nothing else, I think for real estate agents, there's a really good agents all over and they, but we need to be seen. We need mm -hmm. to know what we can do for somebody. You know, some agents are do other things. I know when I look, in a, look at a house, I know what I'm looking at. Other agents are good at other things, but that's my uh, forte. That's what I know how to do. So um, yeah, I think you lost me there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> about social media. You post yeah. a lot. You yeah, know, I, yeah. So that people can kind of get to know you better. And yeah. that's really valuable. Yeah. I'm from a small community. I graduated from Ovid Elsey, but my boys and we live in the St. John's area now. Um, but yeah, I don't want to just be in one area. I, I, I love to go all over. Nothing better than driving to a house maybe 45 minutes away to an area I haven't seen before. And I sold a few over in Grand Rapids. I'm like, wow, oh. beautiful area. Um, so I, I enjoy it. I love traveling. I love seeing houses. And um, yeah. So. And you have some, you have some cool listings up right now. The one I really like is your Maple Rapids listing. If I, one, yeah. wanted to live there, I yeah. would live in that house. Yes, yes. It's we so just cute. got an offer on it. Oh, yeah. congratulations. <laughs> yeah. So I have a question about it because my mom and I were actually debating this recently of like what, what is a Michigan basement? Yeah. yeah. So most of the time, Michigan basements, and it is a check mark on our MLS. We have to check it. Normally stone or stone with other blocks and stuff like that. It's just not a poured wall in a real nice mm. block. So it's anything normally, don't hold me to this, but anything probably before the 1940s, you know, before blocks became available. Mm -hmm. And then now we do the poured walls. So Okay. Yeah. Because I noticed that basement had, had a dirt floor, you know, it didn't yep. have a concrete floor. Yep. And so you know, my mom was like, "That that's a Michigan basement. And I was like, no, I feel like it's something It's else. not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily need to be a dirt floor. Yeah. So if someone was buying that house, like, listen, I'm just asking for me at this point, because yeah. I like old houses. Yeah. And maybe I find myself going to purchase a house with a dirt floor one day. Is it easy to just have someone come in and pour concrete for that? It is for a builder. It is for uh, a builder. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is, um... It is easy and it's not, and I would definitely recommend it. Yeah. You know, a lot of times when you see a basement like that, it was dug out, hand dug, you know, and they just oh never, gosh, yeah. it, there's a lot of work that goes into building a house, especially in the, in years ago when they didn't have all the equipment. I always tease my husband, do you even pick up a hammer? Because they have <laughs> all the, everything's DeWalt, everything's, you know, um, power guns, tools. So yeah, it's a lot easier now. We have bobcats to dig things and we're, my 
my grandpas were hands-on, you know, shoveling every day. So, uh, yeah, but that's what a Michigan basement is. And I'm sure everybody has their own opinion of it, but it doesn't necessarily mean just dirt floor. Right, yeah. yeah no, we yeah. got into this big discussion. Like, <laughs> Michigan basement versus, like, crawl space versus, I was like, I think dirt floor is just dirt floor. Exactly, yeah. exactly, yep. And, yeah, I worked for a, a builder for a little bit while oh. I was in college, and <laughs> I know they have so much technology, but one day it was my job to stand in the pit as oh. they're digging out with the level thing. Mm -hmm. And I went home and I told my now husband's oh. family about it. And his uncle goes, they make machines that do <laughs> And I'm like, then why was I standing yeah. out there in like 20 degrees in oh, my car heart holding a level? But how good to know that. Like, yeah. I love that I have learned so much from my grandpas and my husband. Yeah, I, I love that. So it's a level and you're just when that level goes off and dings you they have it right and then you move on yeah, yeah. that's how it works I know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> so. totally it, it made for a fun story yeah and I'm happy to never do it again yeah <laughs> like my it was so cold my phone wouldn't even like I couldn't even listen to music oh, no <laughs> you know <laughs> yes yeah and we've had worse you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh yeah oh, I mean horrible long yeah. time ago I mean Back in the day, your grandfather didn't have a exactly. phone to listen to music too. And, and no, and the level was not digital like that, you right, know. Right, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's too mm -hmm. fun. Um, going back to kind of some of your social stuff you've spoken about on your social media, you recently did a series of videos on homestead exemptions. Can yeah. we explain that? Absolutely, yeah. and this is huge to me. So, when you have a primary home in Michigan, um, you get a. Uh, uh, tax break, a property tax break. So when you buy a house, you set at the closing table and the title company has a couple of forms for you to fill out. I don't want to get it wrong, but one is like PRE, it's a homestead exemption and then transfer of, of ownership. That goes to the tax assessor and then they put it in and that becomes a primary residence and you get the homestead exemption. Sometimes, I don't know if it's the mail, I don't know if it's just sitting on somebody's desk, but it hasn't got put in right and they're paying, the new homeowner is paying astronomically more than they should for property taxes and the thing that gets me the most these homeowners have escrow accounts for their taxes and insurance so the first year it's good but then mm. then it readjusts because that tax is higher and I had a man call me and he's losing his house because instead of and I'm just guessing here but instead of like a $500 tax bill it went up to 1500 divide that down by 12 months their their payment per month went up so much you know mm -hmm. and so he's like here you got to do something well first you talk to your tax assessor and you there are and they're not thrilled to give you money back but you get money back through if you prove that you live there and now they, they just didn't do the tax exemption for the past three years you can get a refund and there's a form for that I I honestly am probably not the tax assessor's favorite friend because I'm like because I then get on emails with them and whoever needs me and I say hey this is what happened can you work on this for him and uh, two or three guys with the in, in the last month have contacted me and said Carrie I'm paying way too much I said let me help you um, that's huge you know yeah. I I always say I'll pay my fair share but I don't want to pay more and I don't want these people losing their homes for something like that right over an unchecked box that's correct that's and that's the truth so yeah and so it, everybody can look on their tax assessment mm -hmm, form mm -hmm. for that homestead exemption that's if it's right. their primary residence that's correct and if they don't know because this is foreign to people call me text me email me I will I would be glad to sit there all day and check everybody's I swear I would do that. Oh, <laughs> so, that's yeah. So kind. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then another thing that I've seen in in some of your posts, you know, because the housing market is has been what I mean, everybody's been saying it's crazy for the yeah. past several years. Yeah. So, um, you know, especially as like I'm someone who's, you know, maybe in the next year or two buying a house, so I'm I'm paying more attention and there, you know, things are expensive, uh, interest rates, all that good stuff. Um, but some of the posts I saw, you you speak about like multi generational homes as a way to cut costs. And while that's maybe not historically the American dream, that's are right. you seeing more of that among your clients? A little bit in our area, not as much as in the bigger cities, but mm -hmm. a little bit. And I think maybe it, there is something to be said for that because you're right. If you have and in my, for instance, my parents are older. Um, and so maybe it is my mom had knee surgery and needs to move back for a few months. Um, so in it, 
then the younger people, when they move in with their parents, you know, of course, we're not, they're not on the couch, they're working, they're paying their own way. But boy, a $300,000 house is hard for a young person. And so if they can split the cost, at least for maybe five years, and just bank up some money, then go out on their own, I think that's a good idea. You know, it beats renting. If you can just right. split that, it so be beats the renting. So I'll talk to you about renting. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I think for a lot of people there's like a stigma around yes. it oh you know I'm in my mom's basement yeah. or whatever but yeah. I think I think we can maybe dispel some of that That's and just right. like be like maybe it's a smarter decision that's right i i can't t i i'm dealing with a buyer right now that his rent is twenty three hundred dollars a month oh my gosh and I'm thinking, it's just throwing that away every month, you know. Um, and I tell younger people, and, and he's in his he's late 20s, but when I tell younger kids that are starting out, honestly, stay with your mom for a couple of years. Build up that money. Don't waste it. Do, have a plan. Have a five-year mm -hmm. goal. Save up that money. Get a good down payment. I don't see houses coming down in price. Maybe they will, but with all the low inventory, if it was going to happen, I feel like it would have happened when the interest rates got really high, and it didn't. We are mm -hmm. still getting, um, I'm still, we're still getting beat out um, from multiple offers. You know, it's still hard to be a buyer right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And do you think, because in my area, there's a lot of new construction. I okay. live in like the, the South Lion, oh, Wixom yeah. Nova, you know, yeah. um, tons of new construction. But in my, it's expensive you new can't. construction. Yeah. Yeah. Um, people say, well, I can't find an existing home. I just talked to a lady the other day. I think we're going to build. I said, well, let me tell you about building because it's way more than trying to find an existing home. Um, I'm not going to give numbers, but it, it, you're not going to get in a new build for under 400000 That's anything that's built nicely. Right. You know, uh, it's tough. So. Do you think, like, maybe builders will respond and, and find a way to make maybe smaller, less expensive homes? I think we're seeing that. Yeah. I, I think the giant 2,500-square-foot homes, main floor, I, I think it's the... I think they're going to have to change a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I have people that don't want that big of a house. You know, they just, they'd like 15, 1600 square foot, reasonable, a couple of bedrooms, and then a finished basement. That That's the way to maybe do it. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I'm looking at some of these houses and they are huge. Yep, yep, they're huge. And they're gorgeous. But And then you have to worry about the taxes, you know? Mm -hmm. So everything gets added up. And then I always say, so some of my buyers are looking at older homes. Okay, well, if it's a farmhouse, if it's a big old farmhouse, let's figure out how much your um, utilities are. Do we have insulation in those walls? Because if not, what if you get an $800 a month um, heat bill in the winter? And that can happen. That's tough for people. So, yeah. Oh, wow. Mm. So much to think about. Yeah. So, um, Going back to your area, what do you what do you love about selling in the greater Lansing oh, area? I have to say, I'll even go further than that. Okay. I'll say St. John's, Clinton County. Yeah. I am so proud of St. John's. We have come such a long way. Our schools are wonderful. You, when I a few years ago, there was nothing in the downtown area. Walmart had come in. It was outside of the city limits. And so everything was just sort of going outside city limits. Now our little main street, which is Clinton Avenue in St. John's, just amazing. We have coffee shops. We have little boutiques. When I was young, that's how it was. And then mm -hmm. it all went away with the big box stores. Now mm -hmm. it's back. And, and I have a lot of pride in my area. It, it is nice. So, um, yeah. And I, have, I was at an open house in St. John's. And it used to be nobody would come to open houses and everything. One open house, I had 20 people through. And every single one of them was from out of area looking to move to St. John's. Oh, cool. I was so, and I'm like, that just makes my day because they've heard about it. They want to be in a small town. It's it's just cozy. It's comfortable. It's great. We have a brewery downtown. We have a lot of good things to offer. Yeah. Oh, very yep, cool. Yep. Well, now I got to check you it gotta out. You got to check St. John's out. I yeah. don't know if I've ever really been over there. Okay. Is it, okay. I've been to the inn at St. John's. Is that is oh, that, have you been to the... Oh, that's beautiful. Well, yeah. I considered it for my wedding venue, oh, but I ended yeah. up going to Holly instead. But wow. the, the Inn at St. John's oh, is gorgeous. Oh, gorgeous. There, exactly. What is that? The pineapple? Like, what is what is the name of it? Um, Nordic pineapple, right? Or is, no, uh, were you thinking of it? No. No? Hmm. I don't know. No, it's the Inn at St. John's, isn't it? Mm-mm. No. No? <laughs> well, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> If you were to start over again in real estate today, knowing everything you know, is there anything you would do differently? Ah, good question. Hmm. 
boy, I don't know if there was. I don't know if there would be, honestly. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I, re- I can't think of anything that didn't work the way I wanted it to for me. You know, and I don't mean it's easy every day. I just mean, yeah, I like I like uh, negotiating. I yeah, I think I would do it exactly the same. The boys were a little older. My sons were a little older. I think it's hard to do it when the kids are young because you have to be available. And my boys were in junior high and high school, and so that that was good. So I I could run while they were at practices, run show houses. You know, multitasking is huge. You have to be a multitasker to do real estate. Yeah, <laughs> so, oh, yeah. I, I can only imagine. Yeah, and yeah. you with. The, all of your operations you yeah. must be a multitasking I'm pro crazy. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah I was like what are you doing <laughs> so. um were, were there any surprises along the way like kind of unexpected things that along your journey I didn't know how fulfilling it was going to make my life Honestly, as a hairdresser, I love that, but this totally just, my heart burst when I see, uh, at the closing, t- I have, I'm closing tomorrow with an older f- couple that have been married 50 years, oh. and um, I just, they're like my grandparents now. Yeah, I didn't know them before, but they're like, I call them, check on them, are you okay? You got your numbers, how's the house packing coming? That's that's what it's all about, taking care of people. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. That's so <laughs> yeah. cool. Well, do you have anything you're looking forward to this year, either professionally or, or personally? Yeah. Um, we have some wonderful grandkids, and we're going to go see them. I have one son in St. John's, but a couple in New Jersey. So that's oh, what I'm looking cool. for this year. Yeah. And we're working on, uh, my husband and I are doing a lake development out where we live between St. John's and Ovid Elsey. So that's always fun, because that used to be my family's farm. And then the gravel pits come in and dug out the lake, and we bought it back from the gravel pits, and we're building houses around it. So that's a blessing, too. Oh, wow. Yeah. How yeah. many houses? We have just 15 lots. And we and this started right with COVID. We bought this, and then COVID hit, and I'm like, oh no, what are oh, we doing? Nice. <laughs> but it worked out good because we only have three lots left, and we're so thankful. Yeah, it's oh, wonderful. Wow. So, That's and I'm so back cool. in my home area. I I'm right down the road from where I grew up. So yeah, wow. wonderful. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Well, Carrie. Thank you so much. Would you like to direct people how they can get in touch with you, follow you on social media? Yes. um, Call me anytime. um, uh, If if you want to give your phone number, go for it. Is that bad? No. (laughs) Other people do it. (laughs) It's everybody's comfort Uh, level. (laughs) You can always call me at 517-819-6139 or check me out on Facebook. And um, my email is all, all on social media. You can find me anywhere. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Carrie, so much. And thank you all for watching The Closing Table brought to you by Windowsill. I'm your host, Kat Schooler. Please give us that like and subscribe if you're part of our YouTube audience. And if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, give us that rate and review. It helps us find more awesome listeners like you. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you next time. Mm